What do you mean it sucks? This pepper beef is too damn spicy! <laughs> What are you talking about? This is good. How's it going guys? Pepper Beef Spicy here. Uh, bringing you to another tutorial. And which is interesting because I haven't done a tutorial in a long time. Um, and as many of you were not expecting me to do another late tutorial probably. Because it's like, well, what, you know, what else can you say? You've already done so much for it. Well, uh, you know, in my opinion, I feel like I actually haven't done enough because over time, you know, you pick up things, you grow as a player, and I felt like I didn't really cover enough of what I wanted to. I mean, like, what I know now, I want to cover it because that's not ready in the tutorial. But, um, I've already explained how the basics of how to play Lei Wulong multiple times before, so I don't really want to go into that today. Today, I'm gonna go into probably what is one of Lei's most difficult things to understand about the character and it's, and it's to the point where not that many people use this mechanic because it's not exactly very straightforward and in this I'm referring to one Lay's most confusing stance to use in terms of like it's not very straightforward at all which is drunken stance uh, drunken master stance is really really ambiguous on how you're supposed to use it because it doesn't really have a super scary move or a 50 50 mix up or anything super extremely cheap in it that it's like a lot of people just like overlook it and when they try to look at it they're like well I don't know what to do with this stance because it it just doesn't really seem to have anything scary from it but to understand the stance is to really get yourself out of the box kind of situation because in the fact that there are no super scary moves from this dance, it makes it so that this dance is extremely ambiguous to both you and the opponent. Even an opponent who knows Lei is probably not going to know Drunken that well, and if they do, you, the, the mix-ups you can do with Drunken are actually pretty diverse, I want to say, almost dragon level of mix-ups. So in, in this saying that Drunken is very confusing. It's it's extremely hard to read. It's one of the most elusive stances because there's no scary moves from it. Because there's no like particular move or particular string you want to watch out for. Because you know, Tiger four, Tiger, you have Tiger four, and then Panther, you have Panther one dash two, and Snake, you have one two one one two one, Dragon, you have the uh, I don't know like the um, Dragon two plus frames mechanic. There's a lot of uh, obvious moves that you should watch out for in those stances, or like Cradle Cradle plus two and Cradle four or whatever. But, you know, Drunken is just like, well, what comes from the stance? People know, people don't really know, because it just this seems like the moves from the stance are not that great, but they can be great, you just have to be very creative about this. Now, when I go into Drunken, um, I'm gonna say how I personally use Drunken Stance, not how everybody uses Drunken Stance, because, one, not every lay player uses it, no, not every lay player thinks it's useful, and, well, that's it, and those who do use it, like me, well, they don't always say that, um, I mean, they don't always use it the same way. That's just how Lei is, he's, just, he's such a diverse character that he can be played in so many different ways that, you know, two Leis can play completely different from each other and they don't even use the same moves, etc, etc, etc. Now, as I did cover Lei's wall game before, and I did talk a lot about Drunken in that video, but I'm gonna talk mostly about applications outside of the wall in neutral, mid-screen mid, uh, mid game, um, big subs with Drunken, um, I mean, I'll also talk a little bit about the wall, just in case people need a refresher about where it's, like, you know, most effective at. Um, and I'm also going to cover in this tutorial Play Dead, because this, in my opinion, is an integral part of Drunken. Uh, cause anyways, even in, like, you know, Chinese Kung Fu, this is not a stance, this is just part of being, um, you know, uh, Zui, Zui Kwan or whatever it's called, uh, you know, drunken boxing, it's part of it, you know. There's no Chinese dance like that, this is just being tricky and drunken. So I'm gonna talk about both of those, um, in depth. I don't know how long this is gonna take, uh, I would count this as an in depth video, but this is actually pretty long, so it's kind of like a full length tutorial because this topic is very confusing. Uh, so I actually have Lei here as a training partner because I need him to perform things with drunken mix ups, that is, that are kind of difficult to, uh, use. And before I said, never use, never use Lei as a training dummy in training mode because he does this idle stance where he walks left and right and it kind of fucks up positioning a lot. Uh, you would think that'd be kind of useful, like, oh look, I'm stepping, I'm stepping, not really. Your, your hitbox stays in the same place, it doesn't really move at all. First, let me just say that I am the Lei in the custom costume here, um, not the one in his one player costume. 
Alright, so first things first, let's talk about uh, the transitions into Drunken. Um, he doesn't really have that many useful transitions into Drunken. Uh, his default one is 4 3 plus 4, which is pretty decent. Um, this one's probably the best transition because it's immediate, and in the animation, the whole time he's, he's like twisting his arms there back and forth, uh, that's a parry. It's a very, very, very long parry, actually. Um, the parry window is very big. Um, parries highs and mids, kicks and punches, etc. No elbows, no, you know, head, shoulders, and there, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, very long window, so it's very useful in getting out a, of, um, uh, bad situations. And as soon as you enter Drunken, you can block. So, it's not, it's not like a bad decision at all, it's very safe. Um, cancelable, complete, safe, that kind of thing. Uh, you can also block in Drunken, unlike Crane or, uh, Panther, you can't block in that. Um, what else can you block in? You can't block in, um... Yeah, Crane and Panther are the only two you can't block in. Um, but Drunken you can block in, uh, no matter what the situation is. You can also cancel it with down back. Um, alright, so transitions, like I said, 4 is 4, very good parry. Uh, I think I'm gonna show that. I could show it. Actually, let me try this. There we go. Step something like that, where you just move to the side, and it's an auto side step, uh, left, I believe. And it gives you about a plus 3, plus 5 around there. Nothing really too big in advantage range, but there, it, you definitely are at advantage range. And like I said, the parry window is very massive, so it's very, very useful. And it's transition, so we've got 2, 1, forward. Uh, what else do we got? We got, anytime you're in Phoenix, you go forward. Uh, you got back, back, 3, back, back, 1, 1, 3, 2, forward. Back, back, 3, 3, 3, 1, yeah. And then that is a very huge window, that's actually not that useful. You got uh, sidestep 2 forward, which is not that useful as well because it's a long ass window. And you got anytime you can play dead, you plus uh, 1 plus 2. Uh, what else does he have for drunk transitions? Um, I think he has more. Actually, no, he doesn't really have that many. Uh, those are, like I said, you don't really have to worry about transitions into drunken. Actually, a lot of the transitions to drunken come from Drunken uh, itself. Uh, so other than like 2-1 forward, um, you're not really, and like from Play Dead Drunken, uh, in my opinion you don't really use that many other uh, Drunken transitions because they're, uh, the ones that are there, they're not that useful, except for this is kind of useful. Um, but like, there's not that many, and you're mostly going to use manual Drunken anyways because it's faster and it's safer and it has that parry, etc. So going into Drunken. Uh, like I said, there's no really scary moves from this stance, so me outlining what are the best moves in this stance is kind of difficult because every move in this stance kind of has its use. Some are better than others, uh, but there's nothing glaringly like, this is the best move in Drunken kind of thing, because they all have different purposes. Because Drunken has no 50-50 mix-up, etc. So I guess we'll just go in order, and the first thing I'll talk about is Drunken 1. Drunken 1 is this high damage 33 mid, um, goes a little bit forward, uh, and he moves forward and it has negative 11, but it has massive pushback. Well, actually you can't see that. Oops, now I'm long. Um, here. Uh, first one is, I believe, it's this, yeah. See how it pushes you back super far? That is because the pushback on this move is pretty fucking insane. Even at the wall, which I will demonstrate in just a moment. Wall hit. Um, reverse it. Reverse, reverse! Da -da -da. Oh no, okay, I thought I deleted all of See, even at the wall, he pushes himself back. Um, so because this is a negative 11, um, technically it's unsafe, but because there's massive pushback, and there's no move in the game as far as I know that can catch you at negative 11 with that amount of pushback, pushback then it's pretty much safe. Like, um, there's no really um, danger about using this move. It's also a wall swap move, as you can see, it knocks back pretty far. Uh, and you can, you know, boss by dual combo, whatever. Um, this move actually has pretty good range, surprisingly. Um, and it can actually catch people off guard coming in. Uh, it's not really a very, like, you know, straightforward, like, you hope someone you hit him with drunken one, and then boom, you can hit him. It's not something like that. It's more something you're using when you're, uh, spacing. It's more something you're out here, and you just activate drunken, and then, like, well, what is he doing? I don't know what he's doing, so I'm just gonna attack him, because I'm assuming that whatever trick he's got, I can handle it. Well, drunken one, it has a lot of range, uh, as a myth. Surprisingly a lot of range, because you don't think it has a lot of range, because, like, Lei's arms are pretty short, but Lei actually extends his arm and steps forward as much as possible, to do an attack here. Um, the unblock, because this has pushback and people think it's unsafe because it looks like an unsafe animation, people will try to punish it. 
Oh, before I also go into that, um, Drunken 1 has uh, Drunken 1 forward out of it, which takes you back into Drunken. It actually gives you less um, uh, advantage range, because this is not plus on block, it's negative 11, but going into Drunken actually makes it more negative, like a lot more negative. But considering the pushback, it doesn't really matter that much. Also, if you wall splat with this, you don't have to worry, because you do uh, Drunken 3 2 to down. There you go, something like that. Pretty simple. Um, so, like I was talking about, you can actually use Drunken 1 if it's blocked for baits. For example, you can just go up to someone and Drunken 1 them, but you don't expect them to get hit. If they get hit, good, it's damaged, whatever. But in the case they block it, you can abuse the fact that it's unsafe and it has pushback to your advantage. Like, I will show here. See, now that- oops, I just cancel the middle. Pushback, and then you can do that. Drunken back 1 plus 2 which is a high crushing, uh, very, very, very strong launcher. Like, I will see. I try to punch it with back 1-2, boom, I just got to put into a combo. Punch it with 4-3, boom, punish, got put into a combo. Punish it with uh, jabs, boom, just got put into a combo, etc. Now, if you do a, like a long mid, even then, sometimes it does not reach. Uh, it depends on the mid. Sometimes it'll reach, sometimes it won't. Uh, if I do 3 plus 4, I should think it should reach. Yeah, it should reach. So you have to be a little bit careful about what you can, you know, who you're facing and, you know, whether you can crush something. But you can definitely try something like this as a bait, as a mix-up, something like that. You can abuse the fact that Drunken 1 is uh, a pushback move. And you can even go into, like, say, Play Dead. So you do 1, and then, um, Play Dead, Launcher, etc. You know, or 1, then Sidestep, or something like that. You know, you can, your options are, uh, you have a lot of options at that moment. Um... And, uh, like, you primarily want to use this. I mean, it's kind of slow. That's the only bad thing about it, that it's kind of slow. Um, so when you're at the wall, like I was saying, Tiger, f I mean, Dr Drunken 4 is a lot better for wall splatting because it's quicker, and, you know, it catches people off guard. The thing is, Drunken 4 is actually unsafe, while Drunken 1 is safe. So it's like, you know, pick enough, choose options. You want to use a fast move, you want to use a slow move. You use a fast move, it's unsafe, you use a slow move, it's stronger and it's safer. Um, but you know, it's just slower, so it might not come out in time. Um, also a note about Drunken is that people tend to just charge Drunken intentionally, or they're super scared of it, because, you know, people don't really know a lot about this dance, so when you do it all the way out here, people are kind of tempted to attack you because, like, well, he's probably doing some fancy stuff that's, like, completely impractical and he's completely open. Well, it's like, no, you know, you, you can have a... Abilities to be defensive here and crush and trick people, etc, etc, but I'll get into that later um, Especially with the drunken drinking you that almost always makes people go towards you. All right, so moving on um, so uh, Next move we got drunken 2-2 two -two, which is a, a mid-high. It's a uh, natural combo and it leaves at least plus five on hit You can see that step back. It's a lot of plus frames on hit so you can do a good mix up here uh, it also note if you the now pushback it leaves them is just enough range for you to, to get in a hell sweep. He's blocking it because you can. I mean, it's it's not guaranteed, but you you are in just enough range to get a mix up. But if they do back dash out of it, this will whip. So you have to be you know aware of how your opponent reacts to being put into plus range or getting hit. Or you know if they're gonna back dash, maybe you can try to catch them with four four three. Or you can like uh, razor rush them, etc., etc. And because this is plus frames, you can do the same kind of mix-up like I was talking about with, um, you know, drunken uh, one, where it's like because of the pushback. Because even on block, um, this has pushback. Let me see if I can show this. Uh, actually, here, yeah. Has, uh, it has that you know stun lock plus frames. It's both plus frames both on hit and on block. So, you know, it's got that situation where it's like, oh, uh, if they, he doesn't know how negative he is now because I put him in plus frame, I mean, I, I'm in plus frames now, well, you're gonna get fucked. Um, so, like, I'll show right here. Like, boom, and then something, and then boom, launcher. And I'll try to punish it, and then jab it, maybe, punch, etc. Uh, maybe, like, try to hop take or something, boom, punched, etc. Um, you can go into drunken after this. Oops. Um, like 2-2 uh, forward, but this is negative 2 instead of being on plus frames. Um, but there are some advantages to being tricky about this, because it's only negative 2, and there is there is pushback as well. Let me actually see if it's, um, what she calls it. Um, how, do I, how would I do this? I want to see if... Actually, yeah, it's, it's, all about the, it's, it's all about the same frames uh, all over. 
Um, but I like in in block, um, you are negative two, but you don't push them back either when you when when they block drunken two two. Um, and for whatever reason you want to go into drunken after drunken two two, you can like I said do back three plus four to crush uh, highs and get a launcher maybe. Or you can do the same thing, and you can do Drunken 3 plus 4, which has a bigger crush, and it's a little bit faster, and do that. Same kind of mix-up. Um, you have to note that this is not a jailing move, so they can duck that second high. I mean, the second part of the string, which is a high, and they can launch him for it. So you have to be a bit careful, but you know, most time people won't know about that. But I think, actually, this move kind of is used frequently in Drunken, so people may know about it, or may not. You know, it's a... It's, uh, it's kind of a thing you have to just read your opponent and see like what's he, what does he know, that kind of thing. Um, you can also do this at a sidestep too, so in case you don't want to do Drunken, you can just do this and sidestep too, it's the same thing. Um, also part of Drunken side, uh, Drunken 2 is you have Drunken 2 forward, which is this really cool Drunken animation, but it's actually like not that great because you're completely vulnerable during this. You have a slight high crush and a slight sidestep left. But it's not very reliable at all. It's very nice, but it's very gimmicky, and I don't think it works very well. But I mean, you're gonna find someone probably who's gonna say, "Oh yeah, I love that move," that kind of thing. But that's just my opinion on that move. It's not that great. However, uh, drunken two back or side step two back, same thing, is leaves you into back turret, and this move is both plus frames on block and on hit. On block, I think what is it? It's plus one, yeah. And on, uh, she calls it, on hit it's about the same, but plus one for both ways. Uh, because of this, uh, they have to do an I-11 wall standing move to trade with you. Otherwise, anything slower than I-11, they're gonna get stuffed by a back turn down one. Or a back turn hop kick. Because, uh, you are in plus range here. But you're coming from back turn, so you're not that fast. Or you could do a back turn down three, which I believe is, is really fast. I don't know how fast, but it's pretty damn fast. Um... Even though you are on plus frames after uh, Drunken 2 um, back, they can do a hop kick or some kind of crushing move, a low crush move, and they can't beat out even though you're on plus frames. They have enough frames to uh, begin, the, begin the crushing part of their hop kick, etc. Um, if they do anything, um, they press a button that's slower than I-11, so like, you know, like Law's uh, Wall Standing 1-2, or like Lay's um, two, Wall Standing 2-1, two, something like that. Uh, they will get counter hit, and you can launch them for it. Well, which is, um, like something like that, I don't know. There's a, you know, the advanced combo I have in my combo video, uh, they did, look at that. I don't use that move at all, so. Um, also, if they get straight up counter hit by the Drunken 2, um, they can get, they get launched. It's like, a instant launch. I can't really do counter hits, there we go. <laughs> uh, there we go. Do do, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Simple combo, but you understand what I mean. Oh, on counter hit, uh, speaking of which, Shrunken 2-2 uh, sends them flying. Uh, the first hit wall splats, and the second hit sends them further. But if you're really far, you're really close to the wall, it doesn't wall splat. So maybe if you're a bit like you know farther out here, like that, it will reach. Yeah, the range on it is very, very tiny, but it does wall splat. Um, but it's just very, very, very tiny. So it's not that useful for that, but I mean, hey, you know, it's, it is what it is. It just launches them off the floor. And it puts them into a knockdown state, which means you don't get the mix-up, but it's more damage, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, moving on from that, um, I explained everything about Drunken 2. Alright, so now I'm gonna go into Drunken 4. I'm going into, like, a counterclockwise motion, I'm going 1, 2, now 4. Um, so Drunken 4 is not that great of a move. It has weird range has a weird hitbox um and drunken four it when it when you launch them as far as i know the only combo you can get is single jab down one plus two and down, down forward uh, one plus two into a down so it's not a very strong launcher um it's pretty unsafe to, and not that unsafe but it's pretty unsafe to negative 12 both you can transition to it in drunken forward or you can just leave it either way they're both unsafe it's negative 12 i may have said this is safe in the past but According to what I've tested, this is actually unsafe. I may may be wrong because I'm being stupid or whatever, but as far as I know, it's unsafe. So not that useful. It is a straight up launcher. Um, there is a time to use this though. Um, when you get the special drunken parry, since now I've shown this, I'll try this. So this drunken has the default parry, like I said, and we do four three plus four. But he also drunken also has a special parry where if you tap forward as soon as an attack connects you, the window is pretty small. You get like I don't know, guaranteed launcher. You get guaranteed every move from Drunken except for like back people's four. 
Um, I'll show you that in a second. That's not it. Let's see, um... Nope. Oops. Sorry, I'm pretty bad at this. There it is, something like that. When he pushes his hands up like that, that is a free uh, launcher. Not that though. Yeah, and you get a free launcher, you can't uh, do anything about that. Oops. Boom. Boom. You can also get that. I do believe you can get um, Drunken 1. You can get the fast moves, like all the moves that he does standing, but not like Drunken Back Thieves 4 and Drunken Thieves 4. Uh, those are the moves you can get, but either, depending on the situation, you either, if you're a mid screen, you want to do Drunken 4, or you want to do Drunken 1 if you're at the wall. Because both of them will connect after the parry. But the parry is pretty hard, and if you miss it, you do go into a animation where you do walk forward. You can block out of it, but, you know, there it does move you forward, so you it's kind of unsafe at the same time. So it's risky to go for that parry, but if you know if you want to you want it for a reason, you want to train yourself to be good at it, then go ahead. But that's Drunken 4 for you, it's just like a really fast mid-launcher that doesn't really do that much damage as a combo, because it's like a mini combo. Uh, depending on your tag field, I can get like 70, I think. Oops. That's pretty decent actually, but that's because of my talent oh, because law had rage, so it would have been like 75, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's drunken for you for you. It's not really that great of a move. I think it's whatever, so I don't really use it that much. Moving on from drunken four, let me get out of the wall. Alright, drunken. Now we have drunken three, two, four. This is an interesting thing because it's a low from Drunken. Now, this low is actually really, really, like, sneaky. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, people forget that this low exists. Uh, because it's only really used for bounce. Now, the second part, uh, the low from this string is on its, like, negative 12. Uh, does leave plus frames, but only plus one, not a lot. But the thing I like to use this for, if I ever get into mindset of using it more often, because this is an idea I have, is that this move is really good for finishing off players. Because it's a really, really, really sneaky low um, that not a lot of people see because it just comes from Drunken and people forget that Drunken has a low. And pe people don't even remember do moves that come out of Drunken anyways, and people forget that there's a low in here. So when you're trying to finish someone off, um, you can do this. But the thing is, it has really, really short range. So it's just, you know, same thing as down forward, but people can recognize the animation of down forward because, you know, they expect that move to finish him off, but if you drunk in three, well, maybe that'll finish him off because it's very sneaky. The rest of the string, three, two, um, this move is part, that part of the move is safe. Uh, somewhat, you can use this uh, to make um, drunk in three safe because drunk in three by itself is unsafe, but third drunk in three, two, the, the hit, second hit is safe. Um, so you can use that to make the, the move safe. It's only negative one and puts them into a, um, what she calls it, a uh, full crouch position. The third part of the string, 3, 2, 4, um, puts the uh, lay backwards and it, it turns them into up back 4 pretty much, where you can do uh, back for Phoenix or forward for Drunken or whatever. Um, counter hit, on the whole string is guaranteed, uh, and it does wall splat technically, but it leaves you way too far to actually catch them um, when you're trying to, what you call it, uh, wall splat. Um, if, an interesting Okizemi setup that not many people know is if you counter hit, and you 3-2, it launches them, but you can't launch because Lay's weight, his uh, bound moves don't go that low. At least I think so, let me try 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah, he doesn't give you enough time, basically. He doesn't give you enough uh, advantage frame afterwards to do that. But, it leaves them, the opponent in a position where they cannot uh, tech roll. It, this uh, string leaves them in a tech trap. If you do forward drunken, because uh, if you do 3-2 forward, uh, you go back into Drunken. You do 3-2 forward, and then you try to roll 3-2 again. Well, I did some of the time. It puts them into a tech trap, and you can uh, rebound them for a very mini combo. But yeah, if they try to get up immediately, or roll immediately, then they will get put into this uh, Okizemi uh, tech trap. Very useful, very sneaky, not many people uh, know about this. Um, but if they just stay down, they just get hit by the 3. And they just get, um, she calls it, they just get knocked away. Let me try to sort this actually. Yeah, they just get knocked away a little bit like that. Is it counter hit on? Oh, I was off. Okay, they were just uh, trying to almost slime bait it, so. Okay, no. 
So yeah, um, if they just stay down, they just get knocked away with the three. So you do damage and you force them to get back up. If they do roll, then they get uh, relaunched by this and you can put them into a combo, which um, is good. So that's 3-2 for you. Um, there's also one thing that about this string that's extremely tricky. Um, I'll show that right now. And that is... Now, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna talk about this later in more detail, but backwards drunken is actually a thing. It's a very confusing kind of stance. It's not really a stance, but it's like a, the way you are in drunken is really confusing. But you can do drunken moves of obviously what you're back to in drunken. Now this includes most of them. Most of the moves in Drunken are useless uh, in back turn, but three, two, four actually has a hitbox behind him. Uh, I believe that's the fourth one. Let me see. Yeah, and I'll show you in a second that you can actually super bait people by doing this because you can hit them with the flip back, the uh, backwards cartwheel, and it can actually be really deadly if it's on counter hit. Now, this is not really a really viable option all the time. You can really trick someone, but I wouldn't recommend doing it a lot because it's pr it's very, very gimmicky. But I'll show you. So if you counter hit, boom, I'm hit, and it's a combo. That, that's a guaranteed combo. It's it's just it's just how it is. Because the landsman back turned, and then you can do straight up back turn 4-4. Four, four, and you can put him into a launcher. So very sneaky. Um, if it's blocked or, it's pl or if it's non-counter hit, just hit. You also get advantage trims as well, and input lay and back turn, so you do back turn mix ups. Um, you just have to remember to do this really far out, um, really kind of far out, and make sure you do trick people because other than that, it just looks like you're doing crazy stuff. But that's part of the factor of being a lay player is that you're, you know, you're backwards drunken and you're doing strings reverse. Like, is he fucking with me or is he like got a trap? That's the kind of thing. That's the the mind game that people get put into when they play against lay. And if you just want to do that just for, you know, you know, to screw up your opponent's confidence, then go ahead, you know, it's that kind of thing where you can just make your opponent feel really uncomfortable and, they, you know, they're, they're expecting you, they're expecting some kind of trap, so it makes them really scared, that kind of thing. Depends on who you play, you just have to read your opponent on whether they're really confident in catching you or they're, like, super scared and don't want to go towards you and drunken because they're scared of what might happen to you. I mean, what uh, might um, happen to them. Alright, so now I'm gonna, uh, what else we got Drunken? Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about Drunken's more special moves. Um, Drunken has, obviously I explained the, um, the throw, which I talked about that a lot in depth in, in my wall game video. It's just, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you didn't watch it, uh, you should probably go search it up on my channel, but, I uh, guess yeah, so I talked about the throw. The throw is a two-part throw, I mean two parts as in, like, this whole, like, weaving basket animation. Um, he was throwing through the whole thing so it's like if you duck the first part the second if you try to wall standing punish the second part you'll get thrown into it also the move is really crazy good tracking for some reason like it just follows opponents uh, i don't know if it's faster than a regular throw but it, it kind of seems like it is faster than a regular throw i could look that up right now maybe and i'll pause for an annotation but um this throw is very tricky it's very deceptive uh if you, especially at the wall you know, you go forward and then hide the animation with um, Drunken's walk, Drunken walk forward, Drunken back forward. They both, you know, kind of confuse the animation and I mean they hide the animation so it's kind of hard to see um, when this move is going to come out. I mean, if you condition your opponent to see this a lot though, they're going to start breaking 1 plus 2, etc. But once again, the animation is very, very difficult to see, and the break window is kind of small. So it's a pretty good throw. For some reason, this is one of those weak throws in the game where it does less damage than a normal throw. It's 33 instead of standard 35. So it's a bit weird, but I mean, whatever. It's, it's still it's still a good amount of damage. Um, but if you want to hear more about how the throw is used, uh, probably go look into the wall game video, because it's primarily used there. Uh, unless you just want to go up to someone and throw them like that, but I mean, even then, you could just do a 1 plus 2 throw. It's the same mechanic in 1 plus 2, and then 1 plus 2 throws do more damage. Um, anyways, uh, so the first move we'll talk about in his special moves, Drunken, is 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4 is this really deceptive low. A lot of people don't know about this low. It just comes out, it's pretty good range, actually. Um, Tripsum does 29 damage a lot, a lot on counter, I think 35 or something, 34. Um, after that, after you hit them with this, no matter what, I think it's this one? Yeah. Uh, a play dead, a, a face down play dead 3, or a face down play dead uh, 3-4 is guaranteed. 
Try to get up. Can't get it. Try to do side uh side roll. Can't get it. Try to get up and block. Can't get it. Can't get. It. Try to back roll. Get it. Try to get up kick. Can't. Just keep. I just getting hit by it. It's guaranteed. Uh, even if you tag crash, he still takes his reduced damage, but he'll still get hit. Um, so it's just one of those things that's really cool. It's, it doesn't show on the combo meter, but it's just one of those um, guaranteed uh, lows. Uh, very useful low, actually. It uh, it has a very very strong high crush, but because you see when Lei does this like you know spring kick animation down here, his donkey kick, he's actually his hitboxes are actually a lot bigger than his body shows. He's actually not really mid crushing. His mid crush is kind of there, but most mids I believe will actually hit him. So, it's kind of unfortunate. This is low parryable, um, but on block, it's pretty much safe. It's pretty much like Okizemi status safe, like, my next hit will not float you, it'll just put you, it'll just send you away, that kind of thing. Um, so it's pretty f freaking safe, except for the fact that like, it could be low parried, and it's kind of slow, so you could technically be interrupted in the middle of it, but this low is very sneaky, the animation is very confusing. So unless the opponent has seen it a million times, they're really not going to be able to react to this in time. And since Drunken is not used a lot, um, the opponent probably might not see it. But just remember that it is low parryable. Uh, it's one of those moves where you can see, you can low parry it in time because it has a delayed animation. Um, but it's all, if they block it, it's pretty much safe. You'll take like 10 damage max uh, if they if they block punish you for this. Also, if um, your opponent here's a mix-up for you. If your opponent knows that this is guaranteed afterwards, and if you delay it, they might give them you might give them a chance to get up and block it. Now you can use this as a mix-up and instead do a mid. Um, this is better at the wall more likely because then you could get a wall splat. That means I can move him over here. Sure, Dragon goes four. And then mid. Let's say he was he's blocking mid, but if he was, let's say he was blocking low. Because, you know, he knows that I always do this afterwards. Well, like, you know, what if I didn't do it fast enough? Although well, he's gonna try to block it. And then get him with the mid and wall splat him, etc. Or you could, um, do this mid, which will reach, etc, etc. Um, now the health sweep afterwards does not really work that well. I mean, there it worked, that's because he got up. But if you, like, do it so it's guaranteed, it doesn't really, um... It's very, um, unreliable in them, like, getting hit by the second part of the health sweep. And that could be bad, because if it whiffs, you can get launched for that. So I wouldn't really do the second part. I would just do that. Uh, if you do do that, then, you know, a health sweep version instead of Playdate 3. Because Playdate 3 does more, but you could do this. It does less, but you put yourself into... I mean, you put them into a mix-up where you have this version of Playdate, which is... Probably the best version of Playdead because it has the super strong launcher and uh, the low, which is also a um, launcher. 50 50 next to etc. Uh, very good move. I like using this a lot. I especially like using this after, um, let's see, after uh, get up threes. You know, launch them, blah blah blah, and then do four drunken, go over to them, boom, put them in, do a three plus four, catch them with that tricky low. It's not really, you know, it's not guaranteed damage, I could have done a bound and do like, you know, that, but you know, it's like a reset, you know, does, um, catch them off guard, put them into a mix up, that kind of thing, unsettle them. Um, what else? Uh, that's three plus four for you. Uh, also very useful at the wall as one of the wall mix ups. Um, if someone doesn't want to get up after you knock them down at the wall because they want to try to get up properly or they want the, they want you to knock them into rage mode so they can tag crash. Um, let's see, knock them out the wall. And you're drunken because usually, in my opinion, drunken is the best dance for being at the wall. If they don't want to get up, you can do drunken people's four and hit them like that. It still does a lot even when they're grounded. And then you know you still get the guaranteed three and etc. And the you know the mid mix up. Moving on from Drunken 3 plus 4, which is, my, in my opinion, one of the better moves from Drunken. Also, if you, uh, you just whiff it, it does have a crush, and you can punish them, etc. Um, you can use this to bait people, because people think they can punish it with a mid, but the low crush is really high once you... I mean, the him him crushing here, his his like hitbox is really, really low once he finishes the animation. So you can definitely catch a lot of people and get, like, um, you know, a play dead bait punish, that kind of thing. Uh, enough about that move, because I love talking about it, because it's so good. Uh, we've got uh, his drunken drinks, 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, and then fall down, or just 3 plus 4. Uh, this drink, even though he's actually not drinking anything, he restores uh, red health. So that's super good. Um, oh, I'm doing that, I didn't notice. 
Um, so when he drinks like that, he restores red health, and that's pretty much it. He just restores red health, a little bit of red health. Now, it's really, really, really gimmicky. But if you know, if you have a lot of red health, you might, you might consider doing that. Now, you, I would never, ever, ever recommend doing it up close in his face. Now, this move does have a really solid high crush. Like, I'll try to demonstrate that. Um, those are all highs. Um, so, drunk, drunk, drink, 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 drink. And all those highs just whiff. It doesn't look like he's high crushing because, like, oh, well, his head's not going anywhere. It's, it's like he's just bent down a little bit. But no, it, it's actually a really, really, like, significant high crush. Um, but the thing is, he has no defense afterwards. He has no retaliation. It's just like, he just drinks and then he goes back to neutral. Which, he doesn't even go back to neutral very fast. So, it's kind of risky to do it. It's very risky to, have, to do it very up close. But, 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 if you do it all the way out here, and then you drink, that will think people that, you know, that will make people think that you're fucking with them. And they, I, like, 80% guarantee you that they will try to punish you for drinking. So, if you manage to get yourself in a position where you can be full screen and drink, and they'll start charging at you, that's your time to do a 3 plus 4, or do a play dead, oops, um, oops, not that. Drink, oops, not, not drink, I'm being stupid right now. Drink, play dead, punish, that kind of thing. It's it's your chance to trick them into coming at you, and it forces them to coming at you, because like, oh, he's just fucking with me, he's just drinking his stupid bottle of it, I'm gonna kill him. Um, yeah, and I would never recommend doing the triple, because I, I just, this is like way too unsafe, it's way too risky, way, 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 way too risky. Um, but he does fall down afterwards, and you know, the last part of the drink, he does turn into a mid-crush, so that's really useful, but at the same time, it's really, 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 really gimmicky. I mean, you can do this, too, if you want, if you really, really fuck with people, but, you know, it's risky. It's just super risky, but there are advantages to it, like I said, you know, forcing them to come at you, that kind of thing. And it restore a little bit of red health, you know, you can, um, uh, definitely get away with it. Once. Just drinking once. Don't drink twice, you're gonna get owned. Unless they're super scared and they do what they don't want to come at you. Now the bait version of this is up back one plus two. Um, up back one plus two into one is a high crush, and then it turns into a mid attack, turns into drunken one. It's it's basically the same way as drunken one, same exact frames and etc. You can even go into forward from it. Um, this is kind of useful, except that I think a lot of players have seen this move before, and it's actually fairly easy to catch them out of this because then you could just do like a uh, running three. Slash kick, or I don't know, like, I don't know what else, like a lotus kick for lay, etc. It's not, it's very easy to get him out of this, and he can't block in the whole animation. So it's kind of risky, and he does fall down sometimes, and he can create, like, a bait, which you can do, but it takes, like, a long time. Uh, he's, like, he's, like, drinking the, the giant, uh, barrel of wine. I think that's what he's, uh, imitating, or the giant, like, keg of wine. Um, it's risky. But it has its uses, like sometimes, depends on the opponent. But I once again, I would never recommend it doing up close. When you're in drunken, you want to be far away. You want to be far away when you do those moves. The instant retaliation is kind of gimmicky, it's not that great because it's slow. But, you know, maybe you can catch someone with it. It's honestly, if you're going to do that, it's honestly just to let himself fall so you can crush something so you're better defensively, and as soon as you land, you can do a play dead move. Which is, you know, more options than just doing the automatic uh, drunken one. Uh, okay, other moves. Let's see, what else does he have? He has, I think, covered most of them, except for the last one I have to cover is back one plus two, which is one of my favorite moves drunken. It's the spinning headbutt from uh, Drunk Master 2. Um, this spinning headbutt has a long ass high crush. It's the same version of his um, back one plus two, except even longer. Even though when he's even spinning, he even has a high crush. But as soon as he jumps, that's when the hitbox comes out. It's not like when he like goes forward, it's just as soon as he leaves the floor, the hitbox happens. And it's a very strong launcher. If you've ever seen the combo for this, let me just show you. Boom, 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 boom. Oops. Let me actually... See, this is why I don't choose Leia as a training partner, because he gets all over the place, goes crazy. 79 solo, which is pretty good. If you tight crash that, you can get about 100, I think. Um, or you can do this. Get back up, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Lots of damage. It went with rage, does lots of damage. Um, like, I think, which one is it that I have? Which is the bait? Uh, 
Oh, I don't have the bait. But, uh, oh, I do. Never mind, it's number one. Oh, no, I changed that to jab. But I, I showed it to you in the beginning where how after drunken one, you could be drunken uh, back people's floor. I and mean, back on those two, and it can just catch people. Um, also, you could kind of just do this randomly out here, and people will get hit by it. I'm not even joking. People will just get hit by it. Because, like, well, he's doing a move, now let's get ready to whiff punch. And then they underestimate how much range this move has, and they just get knocked. You know, they just get... They get wrecked by it. It's it's just something that tricks people. It's like, yo, wow, I underestimate how much range that move has. And uh, even if it gets, if it hits, I mean, if it's blocked, let's see. Um, it, it it forces them to block and it puts them in play dead. And you cannot launch this. Like I'm gonna try to do a lost low combo. Yeah, see, it does not work. It just, uh, it, it, it makes some automatic relax stance, automatic okizami, you can't float him out of it. However, you can float him while he's jump while he's in the air, but, like I said, it's pretty hard because usually most people float with jabs, and this crushes jabs. Except for that time when I did one too. Yeah, so I'm trying to hit it, and he's just, he's just crushing it. Even 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, crushing it. Try whole spell challenge spin kicks. Crushing all of it, yeah. Very solid crush, lots of damage. You can definitely get very creative with this. Like I said, using Drunken 2 2, or using Drunken 1, or etc. 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 Or just doing it like in the open. Just do it. Just do it, Nike. Just do it. And if you land and um, they don't punish you for whatever reason, or they try to punish you with a move that uh, that gets uh, crushed by Play Dead, you can do a Fables 4 for max damage. That's the best amount of damage you can do, I think. Oh no, the best amount of damage you can do after that is. Um, is down people's four, which is a move not many people know about. Actually, no, yeah, yeah I'm right. 30, um, this move is the best move in terms of damage, because it does 34. But, anyways, um, yeah, you can do mix-ups after that. You can do the slide, which you get a guaranteed uh, played at three. Or you can do the mid, or you can do this other low, which is super slow, so it's not guaranteed. Even if it's like uh, they whiff a move, it's never guaranteed, really. But not many people see this move at all, so you can't do anything about that. Uh, what else am I gonna talk about? That's back people back one plus two fully. Very solid move, completely safe. Uh, you can float it in the beginning, but it's it's actually a lot faster than it seems because as soon like I said, as soon as he leaves the floor, he's into a, a hitbox. I mean a hurtbox. So like um, I don't know, actually hitbox is right. A uh, hitbox, so it's very hard to flip this move. So it's very safe and it's very good. Like I said, it's very good, very safe all around. You'll, you'll, when you get punished, you won't get punished for a lot. Uh, I can almost guarantee you that. So that's all the moves from Drunken. Let me just check my notes, see if I missed anything. Yeah, oh no, there's one move, one move, sorry. The Drunken Dive, which is uh, Drunken up forward 1 plus 2. I, talk, I also talked about this move a lot in my wall, label, label on wall game combo. Not combo video, uh, just tutorial video. This move is also very safe. Uh, 28 damage, uh, counter hit and knocks him down. Uh, if you counter hit, you can get a guaranteed slide. Uh, if they get up, they, you know, it's more damage. But uh, Also in this situation, this is the same kind of situation where I talked about with Drunk Pickles 4. Because it knocks him down on counter hit, you can get a mix up here. Because uh, they, you know, they know that low is coming because the slide's guaranteed. They're going to try to block it. Um, then you can hit him with that mid, etc. That kind of thing. Also, in this same kind of situation, you could trick them, they could try to block low and then it's not coming. You could do that instead and trick them with that. This move in particular is extremely safe on block. And when I mean extremely safe, I mean if you block this move, like, let me show. Um, oops, oh, that's not it. I actually should be talking about this in my play dead section, which I should, but I'm talking about it now, so I might as well. See, um, it, the amount of pushback it leaves Lei, both characters, you can't really punish it. And you're like, okay, well, how about low parry? Well, you can't, this is a move that you can't low parry for whatever reason. I just found this out today when I was testing out my notes for the video. You can't low parry it. It's completely un low parryable. Well, maybe you can do like 4 4 2, but like, even then, you know, it's just like. It's a, you, have to, you have to do like a specific punish. It's super safe, and it leaves them far back. So, you know, punish them, punishing that move is pretty difficult, and it's like something you have to train yourself specifically to punish that move. 
So it's very slow, but it's very, very, very safe. So you can definitely use that in mix-ups at the wall. Especially, like I said about at the wall, if you're using Drunken. Um, you know, if someone doesn't want to get up, etc. You knock them down, and they don't want to get up, do that, and it's a free hit. And then you put in the slide sands, so if they get up again, hit them with a the slide, you know, put them back in the play dead, and the mix-up continues, the Okazemi, the mind game, etc, etc, etc. The Yomi, the Yomi, the Yomi factor, basically. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's all the moves from Drunken. Now I'm gonna talk about the play dead senses and how you can incorporate both of them to become an extremely, extremely, extremely tricky kind of guy. Um, let me just check on doing the time, about an hour. Um, alright, so, in Drunken, you have movement, you can't sidestep in Drunken, you can go forward, but you can block immediately. Um, you have that parry in Drunken, uh, you can cancel Drunken down back. But, the one of the coolest things about Drunken is that Drunken counts as neutral, where you can cancel Drunken into a play dead anytime. Um, just be careful not to do 3 plus 4 first. You can make sure you do the direction first, because if you do 3 plus 4 first, he drinks and you're super vulnerable except to, except to highs. But, like I said, no matter what kind of situation you are here, you can play dead crush anytime you want. Now, if you like to watch my gameplay a lot, you know that I love Play Dead. I love to crush with it, I love to trick people with it, I love to abuse its moves, I love it so much, especially this version. So how do you incorporate those two moves, those two stance types together, Drunken plus Play Dead? Well, because Play Drunken is such an ambiguous thing, people who are baited to attack it because it's like, well, there's nothing threatening from it, and well, I just want to hit him, you know, because like, what's he doing? He's fucking with me. He's making a fool of me, he's doing drunken, he probably doesn't have anything planned, he's just trying to be fancy, I'm, I'm gonna catch him. Well, that's what Playdead is for. You can just, you know, co instantly collapse from a full hitbox into a crushing position. Uh, it's also the same usage for back 3 plus 4, and 3 plus 4, and you know, baiting them with drunken 1, and then they come block, and then you do back 3 plus 4. It's, it's all these kind of baits, bait mechanics, where you force, some, you trick someone into attacking you, and then you crush it. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the playdate moves in depth, because, um, like I said, you want to use these two in unison with each other, so that you, you know, can effectively trick your opponent into attacking you, so you can punish them with a whiff, etc., something like that. Uh, in this section, I will also talk about how back turn drunken is used, because it's kind of confusing. There's no like, like Bible for how this is supposed to be used. But I'll talk about that. First thing we'll talk about is play play dead regular, which is I just call this play dead regular. Um, which is a lot of transitions into it, a lot. Um, one of them is up four, up one plus two down. There's um, what you call it? There's down three plus down three plus four, which is the regular version. I use that more enough. Now all these play deads have all high crushes and slight mid crushes, um, depending on the mid and depending on the stance. Because even though he's laying down in the exact same way in every single form of this stance. The way his body position actually takes is a factor into how much he's crushing. For example, um, the way you lay down in regular play that is just falls on his back. This is actually a really good crush because his whole body kind of collapses at the same time. But let's say I do uh, down 2 plus 3 play dead, he kind of collapses vertically instead of like all at once. Uh, hard to explain, but like his, you know, his whole hitbox is still there as he's moving down. So you're actually a lot more vulnerable while you're crushing, while you're going into this uh, form of play dead. That's the same thing that goes for uh, this one, but these two, this one, and that one where he falls on his back, those are have better crushes in my opinion. Especially this stance, this stance, this stance in particular has seems to have the highest, I mean the lowest hitbox, so most mids uh, will whiff over this stance. Now, play dead 3. Uh, the very uh, low, cr I mean uh, low move, Hatchley has kind of low range, but as long as your feet touch the opponent, it's gonna hit. Um, like if you can, you can use Lay's forward, uh, his right leg, if it's all the way out there, as long as it touches, as long as it touches the opponent's hitbox, it will connect. Yes, even there to whiff, but it's like if it's like right here, when it, like my leg is right next to him, it'll hit. Um, you can combo out of this, you have to mash down 4 1 plus 2. Like, pretty much mash out on the first active frame, you have to hit him with down 4 1 plus 2. So I just mash it out. Um, it's very, 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 very unsafe, but not many people know how to punish it properly. Let me just show that. 
Alright, see, so if you try to punish it right away... Oops, I'm sorry. You just get, like, a weird, like, flow, whatever. You just, like, this is whatever. You get, you get reduced damage because technically he's still in play dead. The thing, the proper way to punish this is to wait, then launch. Yeah, then you just get up and launch. It's just the way you do it. It's, uh, I'm probably screwing myself over by telling people this, but, you know, that's just how it is, you know. It's actually super risky because it's, um, highly, 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 uh, unsafe. But, um, it's very fast, it's like pretty much instant, so if you, someone definitely crushes over you, go for it, you know, just go for it. Um, the other mid is this low, this mid that puts you like plus 3, whatever, not that many plus 3, and it's negative 13, it's a whatever mid. Uh, but if you do counter hit this, it does put them into a breakable stun, but if they don't break it, because, you know, not many people know about the fact that it puts you into a breakable stun afterwards, you can launch them. I don't know why I still have long range. I think I was showing tag crash, but that's why. Boom, lots of damage, but that, that would have been like 108 uh, because of the range. But yeah, super good. Um, this is okay. Um, from this, you can go into Sitting Snake, which also means, yes, you can go into... I think you can go into backwards Sitting Snake as well? No, you can't, because then it's the opposite stance. So you can only do Sitting Snake this way. Sitting Snake 1, which is basically tight Snake 1 plus 2, and you have... Um, Sitting Snake 4, which is a good tracking mid, which launches if you do, um, if you do hold back 4. Oops. You have to do it pretty fast as well. It's one of those, like, a first available active frame you have to, uh, do, uh, hold back 4. Also, also launch punish blows, as far as I know. This, um, this version of the move, I think, uh, the play, the Sitting Snake version is only, like, negative, uh, I don't know, like negative twelve or something like that. Not a lot. Um, you're also high crushing on this, but you have you have the mid crush. You will pretty much get hit by almost all mids in this dance. Um, all right, and then the next one is he's facing down, and this one has all of his long range uh, attacks in. He has possibly one of the lowest non, I mean the longest non slide lows in the game, which is from play dead down three, which is launch punch as well. But it's super, it's very strong, and it knocks them, and you can get a variety of post-hit mix-up options. You can either go for pure damage by doing wall setting 3, that's guaranteed, can't do anything about that. Um, if you wait, actually, you can get more damage, uh, because if they don't get up, that is, you get more damage for some reason. Um, or you can do down 4-4, four, four, which does about 43, and it carries them to the wall, and you can bound with that for wall splat. You could do down and then go into Panther mix up. Um, or you could just, like, I don't know, use that tag out. You know, it's, uh, it's up to you. Uh, but primary options is either wall standing 3 or down 4 into a mix up, or just down 4 4 for wall carry or tag out, that kind of thing. This is extremely, extremely unsafe, but it's the same kind of mechanic as played at 3. You have to wait to punish it, you have to, you know, block it, then get up, and then go over to him and hop kick him because this is extremely, extremely unsafe. But it for the trade-off for being launch punishable, it's the lo like I said, it's the longest non-slide low in the game, as far as I know. Uh, in play deads in general, they're very good at the start of the round because a lot of people have you know start of the round uh, attacks, gimmicks, whatever, and you can go straight into play dead, crush it, get a launcher, you know, begin the match with that. I do it a lot of my videos, you can see that. And if they don't, you know, attack you, well then just you know, just back roll because you can just do that. Um, a form of play dead movement, not really movement, but like, if you go into play dead out here, you can use that as an advantage to back roll and maybe tag out like that. Also, if you go play dead straight in someone's face, they might be, you know, thinking about blocking already because like, oh, here comes a 50-50 mix up because that's pretty much all the play deads are all 50-50 mix ups. Um, you can trick them into thinking you're going to attack them and then you'll just tag out. It's a thing that not a lot of people expect. Just like play dead, it's like oh here comes an attack. Actually no, I'm just gonna tag out safely because I you you you're already put on a defensive mindset. So I'm gonna uh, take advantage of the thing that you're gonna attack and you're on the defensive and I'm gonna use that to tag out. Or you could um, back roll out back roll away from it, that kind of thing. Longest low in the game, so even if someone like you know back dashes, I can still catch them. Uh, at like the beginning of the round. If someone back dashes from here, I can still catch them because of how long this uh, low is. Uh, master the range of this low if you want to use it. 
master how how the the footsie range of it so you can abuse it because you know people who don't play late are not gonna know how long this low is exactly so you can definitely trick them because they're not gonna expect that this low actually goes super far um also about most of the plated attacks most of them track really really well except especially the lows they track like a, almost like you know 180 degrees almost they're not homing moves but they track really really well like lane general tracks really really well which is one of his uh best features. Anyways, but enough about that low. You also got this mid, 4-3. Uh, wall splats, but you can't really uh, get up because, I mean, well, bound it because it, he goes back into play dead into uh, the same stance. This is technically safe, but it's also unsafe because what someone can do is they can do a bound move that's, that directly hits the 4 or a bound move that launches someone up. Uh, those moves in the middle of when Lei is recovering back into the ground, you can actually float Lei here. Uh, where I paused it right now, you can float Lei. Definitely float Lei. Um, what else? Uh, low, mid's pretty good. It actually goes farther than the low. So this is part of the 50-50 mix-up. Is that you can catch someone either with that longest low or catch them with that longest bit. It's whatever the opponent's condition to block um, in terms of play dead. Because in my experience, People have either been conditioned to block mid against play dead or block low against play dead. Uh, the people who block mid are te are usually the better players. So you can you know that's when you can start hitting them with the low. And the low actually does more than the mid. Plus you get that guaranteed follow up. So you know it's um, more reason for you to use the low. Even though it's un even though it's unsafe, just because it's launch punishable does not mean it's unusable. Maybe if you're Korean, maybe. Because they hate being unsafe, they like using, you know, only basic, very basic moves to win. Um, but as a late player, in my opinion, this is super good, even though it's highly unsafe. But that's just my opinion, though. Another playable player will probably tell you otherwise. Also, from the stance, you have 3 plus 4, which is a safe mid, which for some reason, the hitbox doesn't always work together. Both hits don't always hit. But either way, it's completely safe, and it wall splats put lays up, so it put, 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 puts lays standing, so you can wall splat. Um, for whatever reason, this move doesn't always hit all the time, and it, this move is one of the few moves in play dead that doesn't have good tracking. Um, so you have to be careful about that, but that's pretty much it for you. And like I said, this is part of that mix-up where, like, you know, you, uh, counter-hit someone, and then you can do, like, you know, uh, that, and, you know, trick him with the mid. What was it? Uh, oh no, sorry, it was, um, this one. Trick him, you know, the thing is you're gonna go low, and you hit him with the mid, that kind of thing. But it's only reused for the wall because this move, 3 plus 4's range, is really short. Moving on from that one, we've got uh, down 1, 2 plus 3 play dead, which is the, my favorite one, where he goes into this back position, and the most significant move from this stance is the spring kick launcher. There's 27, lots of damage, and it's a straight up, you know, class A launcher. You can do any kind of combo you want afterwards. I like to tag out a lot after it. Let's see. And do that. And then combo. Oh, that didn't work, but you know what I mean. Um, this move is very good, 27, uh, very good damage launcher. It's pretty fast too. This is my primary move I use when I'm baiting people with play dead, they just come over and they whiff and boom launcher, you know. Especially since like, one, one of the factors about play dead that's so good is that unless someone's conditioned to always block mid against play dead, like I was talking about earlier about just read your opponent, you know, how do they react to play dead. If you bait, so if you bait someone and they whiff over your play dead, and they, a lot of players uh, don't deal with it well, and by that I mean they panic. They just panic when they say, see that I've you know, you've I've caught them in my play dead trap. They just start blocking low because they whenever they say play dead, a lot of people like uh, maybe 60, 70 percent of players I play online, they're just like, oh my god, low. There's a low. It's come. There's a low. It's a low. It's a low. Play dead's all about lows, and they start blocking low, and then boom, strong ass launcher, lots of damage, etc. Now, like I said, this doesn't work on everybody. You have to know what your opponent's mindset is when it comes to play dead. Uh, a lot of people do block mid. And this is unsafe, it's only like negative 13 or 12 or so. Um, and you know, they can uh, punish you for it. But this is part of the 50 50 mix up because Play Dead, this version of Play Dead has a clean hit uh, low, it's like a Hell Sweep kind of low, where it, it'll launch them. 
only at clean range though and like I said this is why you never choose later train dummy because he moves so much and it's and it messes you up um, God damn it. too far away now yet you you but, but this is a good example of how close you need to be in order to launch someone also counter hit always hits also here's a mechanic for you um, if you're at the wall and you could do the let's see not that. 3-3? Three, 3-4, three, uh, three, sorry. You can get a wall splat like that. Just get a like, classic Kazuya style health sweep into a wall splat. Can't do it directly at the wall because then you won't get enough time. But you can, um, I think you can do... No, you can't do that. So you just so at the wall. Uh, oh yeah, there are two options at the wall. If you're far, if you're a little bit farther away from, a little bit far from it, you can do that, like I said. Or if you're off axis and hit them on a side wall, you can also do that, depending on uh, what's your wall axis. Or you could do this move, 3 plus 4. Um, this is also launch punishable. In fact, um, this is launch punishable, and this launch. This is a low into a special mid. If either one of the moves hit, I think uh, by itself, um, either the low hits by itself or the special mid hits by itself, it puts them into this uh, launcher state. Let me see if I can get it. You kind of have to get it at, at foot, foot C range in order to activate the launcher. Yeah, like that. And you can put it back. But it's, it's, it's the same kind of knockdown as uh, Sitting Snake 4, where you do a uh, back 4 hold and then do a back turn 4 4 to bound it. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Um, it's launch punishable, but not many people know that. But you do have to be careful in case your opponent does know that this is launch punishable. Um, also, if both hits connect, it just sends them really flying up, and this is another one of those situations where um, if you're a little bit farther from the wall, you can uh, launch them over there. I mean, you can wall splat from over there. See, like that. Boom, 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 boom! Uh, Alright, so now the last version of play that I'll talk about is Slide Stance, which is down 1 plus 4. I don't use this one a lot, um, because this kind of has the worst moves in it, in my opinion, for Play Dead. It's kind of like a weird moves. It has this good reliable mid that uh, if someone crosses over you with a shoulder charge and you're facing towards them like this, this will usually catch them. Because sometimes if someone crosses over you while you're in play dead, uh, this move will whiff or this move will whiff because for whatever reason. Like if you've seen my um, my montage of junk of like lay uh, baits, this move not that oh, sorry. This move tends to go through people sometimes because of the, just the way that the hitbox rogue blade just passes through them instead of like actually hitting them. But um, this bicycle bicycle kicks uh, play dead move usually hits opponents usually, um, so it's pretty good. Um, GM fighting GM has taught me that you can launch this move. You just need a custom float combo for it, but. Even though this is technically safe, if someone has trained against it, you can actually float a uh, lay out of this, which is bad. But not many people will do that, but you know, it's just like, you have to rate your opponent. Can I use this move against my opponent, or can I not use this move against my opponent? That kind of thing. Um, you can't really wall- you can wall splat- oh wow, whoa, that was a wall splat. Hold on a second, folks, that was a wall splat. I mean, that was a combo, not a wall splat. Alright, never mind, it's, 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 it's really, really unreliable, never mind. Um... But anyways, yeah, it wall splats, but you really, you can't really get a wall splat combo, even though it splats the wall. Um, what else? Uh, let's see what I can say. Oh yeah, from this stance, you have slide, which is, you know, basic stance slide. It's just like a, a drill, like law slide, or lee slide, or like a running three, or a running four. The standard slide does not a lot of damage as opposed to law slide, which does a lot. But it does about 32, that's with rage. Um... It's a really weak slide, and you get a guaranteed um, plate at 3. Or, I think, a guaranteed plate at 3 plus 4, I think. Let me see. Yeah, you, you get a guaranteed 3 plus 4, which is probably better because it sends them farther and does more damage. Um, you also get a, you get a guaranteed 4 as well, depending on how close you are to them. Which can be useful because it can actually wall splat them. Tiny, very tiny wall splats. Sometimes you can get lucky with how this wall splats. Um, also, uh, what else I gonna say about this? For some reason, Lay Slide in particular is really, really, like, shitty range. Um, it just, it, it doesn't really have a really long active hitbox, so the slide for Lay Slide is not as good as other slides, you just have to be aware of it. And, of course, you can get floated out of it because that's how you punish slides. 
Oh, and then the last move from this dance is down plus four, the fish attack. Like I, I talked about the usage of this move before already. It's very good at the wall. Um, it also sends Lei backwards, so you can bait people like that. It's very, 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 very safe. Can't be low parry, can't be block punished. You have to have a custom, like, you know, a move that'll hit low and move forward very far in order to punish it, and quickly, because it's Lei doesn't... I mean, you, um, Lei recovers fairly quickly in this move. Uh, yeah. So those are the play dead moves for you. And, like, I talked about the crushing. The primary moves to crush with are like this, I mean, to punish uh, Wiss when you crush someone with Play Dead is Play Dead 3. Uh, this version of Play Dead uh, 4. Uh, the down version, Bicycle Kicks. Um, and 3 plus 4. About that. Those are the best moves to punish people with in f when they uh, whiff over you with Play Deads. Uh, also, if I didn't mention this before, the launcher for uh, Drunken for this version of uh, Play Dead doesn't really have good tracking, so if someone's stepping a lot, you may have a hard time using this, so just be a little bit careful with that. And more can, more experienced players will recognize this version of the stance and know that this will come out, and they want to block that. I mean, they, they want to block that because that's a stronger launcher, because may, maybe they'll get hit by the low, but they get hit by the low, the launcher, I mean, the combo from, this, from the low is a lot less um, damaging, so they probably want to do that instead. Uh, block mid, I mean. But, if someone's just like, oh, I know about this, and they get confused on which version of Played It has that mid, uh, then you could just abuse lows on them all day. Because they, they keep expecting this launcher mid, when it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to do all these different kinds of lows. Etc, 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 etc. Alright, now I'm going to talk about um, how you can use uh, Play Dead and Drunken uh, back turned. Uh, Drunken back turn is not um, like a stance you can get into normally. You can't just like go back turn like you're drunken. Uh, you have to go into a play dead and then plus uh, what's it called one plus two to get into drunken. Also, in terms of getting up into play dead from drunken, I like to do this a lot where I just go into drunken from play dead, etc., etc., etc. Um, doing this is very tricky. It actually mind fucks opponents a lot because like you're, they're expecting a play dead mix up and then suddenly you get up into drunken and now like what the hell is he doing now? Uh, I don't know anything about Drunken, and now I'm up close with it, and I have to face it in my face. It's very, very ambiguous to a lot of opponents. It can be very tricky, so you can use that a lot. It's very, um, very useful. Also, from the two ways to go into it primarily are from this version of Play Dead and this version. Oh, sorry. Come on, come on, Lay. Come on. Why are you not doing it? There we go. Um. This version of Playdead, when you get up into Drunken, he actually moves backwards. Uh, this causes your hitbox to disappear and you move back, it's kind of like a, uh, a, um, side, uh, a back step? I'm gonna say back step. Um, back dash, sorry, not I'm gonna say back step, back dash. It's kind of like a back dash, so using this, you can um, get out of the way very quickly. And it can actually go, so, so like in one of my videos I showed someone trying to, whiff, trying to hit my Playdead with a low. Uh, they ran up to me and tried to low me. Well, then I just got up from that play dead. And why am I not there? We go. I got up from the play dead into drunken. He his, his move whiffed, and I punched him with the three drunken one. Uh, that's the kind of thing you can just like you you would think about uh, how you can, you know, you, how is your opponent gonna attack? You? Well, is he gonna do a low or is he gonna do a mid that collapses on the, collapses on the floor that hits the floor? Then just avoid it with that drunken move, and you step backwards, you get up, you remove yourself from the floor, and you can possibly with punish them. And if not, well, at least you can block, because you can block in drunken. So it's a very win-win uh, situation. Anyways, about backwards drunken. Uh, get it into the backwards versions of Play Dead, like uh, down 1 plus 2, and down uh, 2 plus 3, plus 1 plus 2, and he turns into backwards drunken. Now, uh, now all the uh, movement con or bleh, movement controls are reversed in this. It's kind of confusing, but you'll get used to it at first. So forward goes backwards, and backwards goes forward. And I mean forward, I mean going towards the opponent. So if you press towards the opponent, you'll start running away. Now this drunken walk has a very long uh, animation where you just walk really far away. It's very useful for baiting people to come closer to you or just wasting time. Um, because he actually walks really, really fast. He goes, uh, he goes a long distance very fast. The only thing that doesn't make this overpowered is the fact that he has to stop between each rock, or because then you know if someone's running at full speed, they're gonna eventually catch up to you. It's just you, you don't move as fast as um, someone moving at full speed. 
Um, speaking of this, uh, like I want to talk more about in unison with Drunken and Playdeads. Um, when you have Life Lead and the timer, you want to waste the timer, going into Playdead and like back rolling out of Playdead or just like finicking around with Playdead or constantly going to Playdead or going into backwards Drunken and running away and just crushing, um, that is actually extremely useful for wasting the clock because even if an opponent hits you, there is a good chance that you won't take a lot of damage. Either you'll crush and whiff the, and make their stuff whiff and you'll be able to hit them for a combo or something, or you can just take a little bit of damage because as you know, when you're on the floor, you take less damage. So, and play dead counts as being on the floor. So, you can waste a hell of a lot of time by making your opponent scared to approach you because you're one, you're in play dead and they don't know what's up your sleeve. Or you could just keep running away at the same time, running away, and if they even if they do decide to hit you, and they do manage to hit you, you're going to take less. And there's a good chance, depending on the type of move they hit you with, that it'll just knock you away and make it even harder to hit you and waste the time even further. I mean, you'll take damage, this is probably guaranteed, you'll take damage, but you're going to waste a hell of a lot of time while taking a minor amount of damage in the, in the process. Um, now for the moves in Backwards Drunken. Now, most of the moves are the same, like I can do Drunken 1, I can do uh, 3, 3, 2, 4, like I mentioned earlier, I could do 4, I can do uh, 2, 2, and the transitions are the same, but like all the directions are reversed, so if I want to do uh, 2, 2 into Drunken, I have to do 2, 2 back, now I'm in Drunken again, etc. And then you could really, really, really confuse people with that, like, man, people will get so mind-screwed if that. If they, if they see that. But, I mean, it all depends on the opponent. Will you be able to get away with this with your opponent's character? Do they have a lot of moves that can hit you on the floor? Uh, that reach really low and go a long distance? That kind of thing. Like, you can definitely bait people to come towards you, but you just have to read your opponent and see, like, how, how well you can get away with some of these gimmicks. Now, while you're back turned, other than the controls being reversed and you having most of Drunken's moves, you also have access to back turn moves as well. Um, you can cancel drunken back turn by doing just crouching, and then you'll just become, um, you know, you'll just go into regular back turn as Lay, you know, normally has as a stance. Or you can, uh, you have a little bit of um, back turn drunken moves. You have down one, since the, the the way to look at this is that moves that drunken that Drunken does not have in its stance move list, you'll have the back turn, you'll, you'll have access to the back turn uh, moves. So like down 4. Drunken doesn't have down 4. Like if I do down 4, it just turns out it's 4. But but because back turned, the stance has uh, down 4 the hell sweep in it, you'll be able to do it from back turned. And that makes it extremely tricky because people will think that back turned Drunken is not back turned. It's just Drunken but he's in the opposite direction. But like no, you have back turn moves in it. You have down 1. Um, what else do you have? I think you have Wumpus 2. No, you don't. You have, um... I think you have... Um... Back turn hop kick? Can you do that? I don't think you can. No, you cannot. I lied, sorry. Yeah, anything that you don't need to, like, uh, jump or do a direction for, really, you will have access to it. But anyway, primarily, yes, you will have down 4, which is a launcher. And you will have down 1 which are both very very tricky moves in terms of back turn drunken because you know you don't you can't really uh, see it coming also from uh, from uh, drunken all the stances into play dead are now reversed now um, down 3 plus 4 will take me into down 2 plus 3 because it's technically he's not auto correcting he's going into the proper stance because you could see how this is the opposite version of this because they're both laying the same way but the way they're facing is different. So if I go into the face down version, I'm gonna go face up. Or you know what I mean. I'm gonna face the other way. So if I go into down 3 plus 4, which would technically make me face towards lay, I'm gonna face the other way. Yeah, I'm gonna face the other way now. So if I go towards the launcher, the one with the special 4 launcher in it, from back turn drunken, I'm gonna face towards lay instead of facing away. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm gonna face towards him, and you just gotta get you just gotta get used to it. It's really confusing. It's like I mean, I probably sounds super confusing when I'm explaining it, but honestly, you just gotta get used to it. That's the only really way I can tell you. Um, for example, like because I know I like to crush moves a lot with this and punish it with that. If I'm doing back turns drunken, I the the command I use to enter that stance is different from what I would use if I'm just regular. 
This is also the same, I think? Yeah. Um, if you, this is also the same case for Backturned. If you're trying to do Play Dead from Backturned as well, it's the same kind of mechanic. Um, and you could also trick people a lot, like doing some certain Play Dead uh, drunken moves in Backturn. Like you could do Drunken Headbutt. And then you'll end up in this stance, and someone could come towards you, and you could punish them with Play Dead. Or you could do uh, 3 plus 4, and you'll end up towards them. You could do Slide Stance. Or you could uh, drink from Backturn if you want. Or um, what else can you, you can do like this? Like I talked talked about that already. Or you can even do back turn throw. You could do that, and then you just move further away like that. Um, if you crouch, and then you can do play dead. There's so many things you can do with it, pretty much. You can be very, very, very creative with it. But primarily, like I want the the mindset that I want to give you guys is that drunken is used is made to be confusing. It's made to be very, very ambiguous. People are not supposed to know what's supposed to come out of it. Even if they know what's supposed to come out of it, uh, like the move, they know all the moves that come from Drunken. The fact that all the moves from this dance are not really moves that are super scary, it's very ambiguous what you're gonna attack with. Like I talked at the beginning, when you're in Panther, you're either gonna see Panther 2 or Panther 1 2. Mostly Panther uh, 1 2. Or if you're in Tiger, you know, everybody's like, oh my god, Tiger 4, Tiger 4, Tiger 4. Or if you're in Crane, 1 plus 2, or Crane 4, people think about those moves. Uh, or if you're in Dragon, Dragon is really ambiguous, so that's not really a good example. But, you know, I think the most glaring move from Dragon is Dragon 2. Or the Dragon uh, Dragon 1 back mix-up, that kind of thing. Also, a small small side note, a small footnote about Dragon. You can go into the launcher Play Dead version by doing down 3 plus 4, and you'll take you into Play Dead. This is the only version of Play Dead you can go into while you're in Dragon. Just have that note. It's made to be confusing. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going Drunken up close unless you're really confident in, your, in, in pressuring your opponent and mixing him up. Uh, also, if you can also go into Drunken at the wall. That's also what I would recommend. Now, the moves from Drunken in general don't have amazing range, but you can make them have good range by walking up and using the long Drunken walk because that moves you forward very quickly. Um, and just be tricky, you know? Just like uh, throw out moves in random, you know, look like you're not doing anything, but actually you are because maybe you go up to them and you start with 3 plus 4, their move, their move whiffs, boom, hit them with that. Um, Use that, take advantage of the pushback, do back the plus four, just throw drunken and then like drink maybe and they're coming at you, do uh, back the plus four to catch them if you know, crush a high, um, etc, etc, etc. Um, abuse the plus frames of this move, um, you can do that, play dead, drunken, back up, launcher, etc. That's an example of what I'm talking about. Or you could see you know, you could just be out here, just do play dead randomly, drunken, then uh, run away, someone's catching up to you, boom, play dead, punish it, etc, etc, etc. I'm just giving you a lot of examples at the moment. Um, let's see, you can go drunken up someone, then go in their face, play dead, setting snake, etc, etc, etc. Um, these are all just different kinds of mix up you can use um, with drunken. Um, oh yeah, like another one I like to do is I like to slide through them, then get up with Drunken, and then do a, a straight up launcher. Because they, they don't expect that uh, launcher from Playdead, because they think back turn Drunken is its own stance. Which it is, but it also shares some moves with uh, back turn stance in general. So you can just be very, very tricky with that in general. Or you can you know, like go Drunken, then crouch, and then grab. You know, you can be very creative. I'm just giving you a lot of ideas. At the moment, Drunken and Play Dead were meant to be used together. You don't have to use Drunken, you can Play Dead by itself. I do that a lot, but it's just very, very usable. Um, now, if you want to use hear about more very, very non mix up y, more practical usages of, of Drunken that we'll use more often, but most of what I'm talking about is drunk, Drunken mix ups that involve the throw. Uh, I suggest, I recommend you go watch my video on Lei Le Long's wall game because that move, that video talks a lot about Drunken Stance at the wall and how it's very, it's extremely useful at the wall because Drunken Drunken's moves are generally short range so your opponent can't really escape from them or space them out at the wall which is very useful and a lot of Drunken's moves are very useful in making a wall mix-up game. Um, which, you know, I'll I explain that more in detail in my, uh, you know, that video I talked about. 
But I think that's mostly what I want to say. I don't know if I have anything else to cover. I just gave you a whole bunch of examples on how to be creative with Drunken. Uh, you can just do it out here, confuse your opponent, catch them off guard with that, abuse the range, um, use play dead with combination with Drunken to just waste time because Drunken looks very ambiguous so opponents are kind of scared uh, of approaching it. If you want an opponent to approach you, space out and then drink some red health that'll piss your opponent off and they'll try to kill you. Um, yeah, um, I think that's mostly what I want to say about it. I think that's uh, all I have to say. If I missed anything, I'm sorry. Um, and like I said, you know, you don't have to agree with me. All the lay pairs can think whatever they want to think about Drunken Set. They can think it's the most, like, most useless thing ever. I mean, definitely I want to say the higher you go up in the level of play, the less mix-ups become important, the more spacing becomes important. But you know, play the game however you want to play. If you want to become like the greatest mix-up master of all time, and you don't even want to care about footsies, you just want to like, mix-up, 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 then do that, you know, whatever. Just play like that. But, you know, it's all up to you. I just gave you a, you know, an introduction, basically, on how Drunken can be used. And, yeah, now I'm just repeating myself, so I think this is the part I'm going to say goodbye. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys figured out how to do Drunken, or at least got a better understanding of Drunken and Play Dead as well, because um, in a lot of my videos, I do use a lot of Play Dead, and I just want to talk to you about my mindset, specifically, when I use Play Dead. Alright, so, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in another video. See you guys later.